20 thousand times. So perhaps you're also thinking, is that actually true? And uh, I'm thinking the same thing. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gita Marie and uh, we are back with another comparison analysis video. Today we are going to explore, find out, uncover what is more sustainable. A plastic bag or a cotton tote? Let's find out. Whenever we compare two products that are so vastly different, there are going to be inaccuracies and limitations to those comparisons. That will always be the case. The problems with plastic are different from the problems with cotton. So saying what is more sustainable in a snappy short sentence I don't know about that. The problems with plastic range from the fact that it's typically fossil fuel derived to the release of microplastic. And the problem with cotton ranges from the fact that it's grown as a monoculture. There's soil pollution and water pollution and the pesticides and fertilizers. The problems are different, but I want to give it a shot. And it's mainly due to headlines like these. Basically all of these headlines have the same study as a source. So let's take a look at it. The study that all of these headlines are referencing is a Danish study from 2018. And in this study, various types of shopping bags, carrier bags, grocery shopping bags, etc., were compared in an LCA report. This study is a great point of reference for what we are trying to find out because it is one of the more thorough ones out there. But there are some limitations to this study, which I will get back to. So stay tuned. Grab your beverage. This is going to be one of the more nerdy videos. So strap yourselves in. One of the conclusions to this study, one of the more popular conclusions, was that you have to use a cotton tote bag between 7,000 and 20,000 times in order for it to be more sustainable than a plastic bag. This is the conclusion that so many news outlets ran with and you have probably seen these headlines somewhere or cited or referenced because it's this study that they're all pointing back to. So according to this study, you have to reuse a conventional cotton tote bag 7,100 times and you have to reuse an organic cotton tote bag more than 20,000 times in order for it to be more environmentally friendly than an LDPE plastic bag, the one that you usually see at a grocery store. And can I just preface this by saying that when I say LDPE plastic bag, this is the one that I'm referencing. This kind of sturdiness, this material, this size. Some of the B-roll that I'm using in this video is not quite that type of plastic bag, so have that one in your mind. It's this one. If you're Danish, you know Futex. Overall, the aim of this study was to find out how many times you have to reuse a bag in order for it to make up for its own environmental impact. And that impact is measured in two ways. The reuse can both be primary, so a shopping bag being used as a shopping bag again and again, and the reuse can be secondary. For instance, a plastic bag being used as a waste bin liner. And when looking at these impacts, the end of life phase was also taken into consideration. So the reuse phase, was it incinerated, recycled? all that stuff. And aspects like production, packaging and transportation was also considered here. And the way they calculated this was actually pretty simple. Every time you reuse a bag, it replaces the using and making of a new plastic bag. So if you reuse a bag five times, that replaces five new plastic bags that are then not created. The impact of that does not exist. Does that make sense? In really short terms, what this study found was that the conventional plastic bag from the supermarket the LDPE plastic bag scored the best on all environmental parameters. This is how many times the different types of plastic bags need to be reused in order to make up for their impact. This is both measured in a climate impact as well as an overall impact. The LDPE plastic bag one time, PP plastic bags between 6 and 52 times, ET plastic bags between 8 and 84 times, biopolymer bag 42 times, unbleached paper bag 43 times, organic cotton between 149 and 20,000 times, and conventional cotton between 52 and 700, 100 times. So why are they measuring both a climate impact as well as overall impact? In the LCA report, you measure a bunch of different stuff. There are different kinds of climate impacts, but you also measure overall eutrophication, pollution, ozone depletion, emissions, 
And according to this study, one of the reasons why you have to reuse cotton totes so many times has primarily to do with water usage. Growing, harvesting, processing cotton requires a lot of water. Most cotton production today happens on massive farms in monocultures, and that has a major water and soil impact. One cotton bag uses as much water as one person would drink in several months. So the reason why the impact is so high has mainly to do with water, according to the study. And it seems like the major reason why the plastic bag scores so low on overall environmental parameters is because you need very little material in order to create a plastic bag. Basically all plastic products comes from these pellets. So you take these pellets and you turn them into whatever you want. You mold them, shape them, plastic bags, you heat up the plastic and then you blow air into it to thin it out. So you're not using a lot of material, whereas with cotton you use a lot of material. A cotton tote tends to weigh around 250 grams, whereas the plastic bag weighs around 24 grams. So right now you might be sat with a feeling of defeat. If that's the case, you are not alone, I can promise you that. When I read those numbers, I was so frustrated. <laughs> Considering my fair use of cotton totes over the last 10 years, uh, I was mortified. Yeah, like I've always known that they've had an impact and that you can overconsume them, but 20 thousand times. So perhaps you're also thinking, is that actually true? And uh, I'm thinking the same thing. And turns out when I started looking into this report a little bit deeper, both yes and no. So stay with me for a little bit longer because so far we have gotten to the same conclusions. We have seen the same thing as every journalist who has cited this study has seen and written about. But there is more to the story and it seems like these details are often left out and they are quite important. A very important part of studies like this is understanding how you compare different materials and products and ultimately how many assumptions are related to those comparisons. When comparing products like they did in the study, you'll need to list the specifications of the products so you can compare them fairly. In this study, they calculated for weight, size, thickness, volume on a classic plastic bag to have something to compare the other bags to. So according to the study, this is the bag that they assume you are avoiding when you reuse your cotton tote 20,000 times. A one-time grocery shopping bag with an average volume of 22 liters and with an average weight capacity of 12 kilograms from a Danish supermarket to a home in 2017. The carrier bag is produced in Europe and it is collected by the Danish waste management system. This one. Not all the bags from the study fit these specifications. They are different. Some of the bags that they compared the plastic bag to do not hold 22 liters. Some of them have higher and lower weight capacities. Some you can carry 12 kilograms in and some you can carry 50 kilograms in. So they're different. And in order to make up for these differences, what the researchers did is that, that they then assume that if a bag is smaller than 22 liters, they then you probably use two bags. So we're counting one bag as two if it has a lower volume than 22 liters. This obviously puts some bags at a disadvantage. And I feel like it's a pretty big detail. Looking at the organic cotton tote, for instance, it has a volume capacity of 20 liters instead of the 22 from the list of specifications, which means that the researchers then assume that consumers would use two bags instead of one. However, the cotton tote also has a weight capacity of 50 kilos, which means that perhaps it's more likely that consumers will overstuff one cotton tote instead of buying two. At least I think it's fair to assume that there are other solutions than getting two bags. Whenever I only bring one cotton tote to the supermarket, I either carry things in my arms like there's no tomorrow, or I just overstuff it. So there are some different behavioral patterns here that are not considered. And if the specifications were altered a little bit, so let's say that the standard bag could carry 20 liters instead of 22, or had a higher weight capacity, that actually means that the classic plastic bag would have an impact twice as high, and the cotton tote would have an impact that's four times as low. There's another thing that I also think feels quite unfinished, and it has to do with the climate impact and the overall impact. When I read through this more thoroughly, I stumbled upon a footnote that I think is quite important. It explains this massively bonkers number for organic cotton being reused 20,000 times. So let's look at that. If we ignore the ocean depletion factor and only look at all the other measures, for conventional cotton, it's lower to 50 to 1400 reuses. And for organic cotton, it's lower to 150 to 3800 reuses, which is much more palatable. But that raises a question, which is why does ozone depletion matter so much here? 
And to answer this, I am so delighted that I found a study that in the most nerdy way possible goes into detail with exactly why. So let's take a look at that article. The study didn't explain why cotton bags looked so bad for ozone depletion. So here's what's going on. The problem comes from how the study modeled cotton farming. It assumes that cotton farming used electricity and that that electricity mostly came from natural gas. And this is actually what's making all the difference because in natural gas pipelines are chemicals that are incredibly dangerous to the ozone layer. These chemicals are halon 1211 and halon 1311. They're actually much more dangerous than the old CFCs, which were banned decades ago. So because the data set used to make this report, to make this comparison, has data that shows that the cotton bags that were analyzed were used with farming measures involving natural gas. That is not necessarily representative for all cotton totes. It is the data from two cotton totes available in this data set. But should we just ignore ozone depletion then? Well, the thing is ozone depletion isn't necessarily the same global crisis as it was in the past. Today, we should be way more worried about climate change biodiversity loss, land damage or nutrient pollution. There has been a lot of focus on the ozone layer and the problems with the ozone layer just a few decades ago, which also means that as a global society, we have done a lot to remedy this issue. And even with ozone depletion being a prevalent danger many places in the world still, it's a little bit of a stretch to assume that all cotton is produced with electricity derived from natural gas. That is not necessarily the case. In many industries, we are seeing a transition into renewable green energy, and that is also safe to assume for cotton production. At least if you buy a cotton tote bag that is not made complete rubbish, if you apply your conscious consuming. But that is not to say that we cannot overconsume cotton. It is extremely easy to do so. So acquiring, collecting, gathering cotton totes everywhere is not the vibe. That seems to be the number one eco-friendly merch idea. More cotton totes. And we don't need any more cotton totes. If we're not using the cotton tote bags, they become incredibly unsustainable incredibly quickly. And even if you don't need to reuse it 20,000 times, you still need to reuse it for several years in order for it to be a sustainable product. So overall, and the overall conclusion here is that using what you already have is the most sustainable option. What? Yes, I know. Crazy. No one saw that coming. Making something yourself using what you already have, using in any way, shape or form, something that is already in circulation is a much better idea than going out and buying new tote bags. One of my main criticisms of this study, apart from painting cotton totes in such a massively bad light, when in fact it's more nuanced, it can be bad, it can be unsustainable, but there are also so many good things about the durability of cotton and about the washability, the biodegradability. It has a lot of great qualities if it's used correctly. But another thing that I sort of feel icky about when it comes to this study is that I often see it referenced as a sort of defense. Plastic bag has gotten a really bad rep and in many ways for really good reason. It is a material that doesn't go away. Plastic bags made from fossil materials doesn't just go away, it becomes microplastic, which is a prevalent problem and it will continue to be so in the future. We just had plastic negotiations this August and we're looking into an increased plastic production up until 2030 with 40% more plastic to be made which means that we don't need to defend the plastic bag. There's so many aspects where we can face it out and look for more circular options, look for options that doesn't require plastic bags. So we need to rethink the design of how we carry groceries home and how we throw away our household waste. Making an excuse for plastic bags to just continue doing what we have always done hasn't worked and it's catching up to us. To us. So I wouldn't say that you can with complete good conscience use a plastic bag, but obviously there's more nuance to it. And using a plastic bag you already have that is in circulation, fantastic. But there's so many ways where we can prevent the use of any disposable bag and we should do that. That is a great idea. So that is my main problem with this sort of study because their main conclusion here is not that we need to reuse cotton totes a million times. It's more so, you know what? The most sustainable thing is actually just um, using the plastic bag that you already use in the supermarket. That's, that's the best thing that we can do. That is an incredibly unhelpful and misguided conclusion. That is everything for me. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, leave me a thumbs up. That would make my day. Or subscribe to this channel if you want more comparison analysis videos like this. I know this was a little bit on the nerdier side, but I love doing videos like this. So let me know if you have any questions, if you have any ideas to other comparison videos that I could make in the future. I would love to hear you guys out. Thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day. I will see you guys next time. Take really good care of yourselves. Until then, bye.